Okay, in this lesson, what we're going to do is investigate something called Z-scores. If you're in my class, you have a study guide. Uh, you can pause these videos at any point in time. If not, welcome here. Um, we've been investigating, in, in this particular chapter, we've been investigating statistics. And the last lesson, we looked at something called the standard uh, normal distribution curve. So what we're going to look at here is what Z-scores are. And just to give you an idea of what it is before we get into the definition, Z-scores kind of help you to standardize data because all data has different means and different standard deviations whether you're talking about IQ, height, weight, um, a variety of things they all have different means and standard deviations so you'll see the usefulness of standardizing all these different pieces of data so what a z-score distribution has is a mean of zero so the average is zero and a standard deviation of one so all the standard deviations just add one or subtract one so if you're below the mean you have a negative um, what's called a z-score. If you're above the mean, you've got a positive z-score, and if you're right at the mean, your z-score is zero. So a z-score indicates this. It indicates how many standard deviations a value is above or below the mean. A positive z-score, like I just said, indicates that the value is above the mean. So a positive z-score, you're above average. And a negative z-score indicates that you are below the mean or below average. Uh, question number one here says, indicate on the standard normal distribution approximately where a z-score of 1.65 would lie. So if you had a, what, a z-score of 1.65, you would lie 1.65 or roughly 1.65 standard deviations above the mean. Uh, question number two says, indicate on the standard normal distribution approximately where a z-score of negative 0.82 would lie. Uh, negative 0 0.82 would be closer to a z-score of negative 1 than a z-score of 0, so roughly there. Um, you'll see the usefulness of this in a second. Uh, what we're going to look at next is what a z-score table is. A z-score table indicates the percent of data below or left of a particular z-score. You'll see the usefulness of this as we can standardize different data. Um, let me show you kind of what the table looks like. It looks like just a huge, huge long list. I'll describe it to you what it looks, what it means in a little bit. Uh, you can get a photocopy uh, from me or for those visitors here. If you go to Google and Google search Z-score table, um, the second link here has a PDF of a Z-score table, so you could just stop watching right now, Google Z-score table, because I'll be using it a lot, and use this Z-score table here. <clears throat> and what you'll see comes up is this guy here. So all Z-score tables are essentially the same. And here's what it does or what it means. <clears throat> so for example, actually no, let's let's look at uh, the first few examples. That'll help explain it. There's negative z-scores and there are positive z-scores. So you'll see there's two halves to a z-score table. So let's examine z-scores. This will help you kind of understand what a z-score table is useful for. In, in uh, the next lessons we'll get more practical as far as examples go. Uh, number one says, using a z-score table provided by me, or on pages 592 and 593, determine the percent of data to the left or be below each z-score. Let me just show you how we could actually estimate. I'm going to estimate in all cases all of these questions first. So if I had a z-score of 1.38, so roughly here, I would have approximately, if I was to figure all this out, all this highlighted yellow would be below me. So that would be, um, well, up to here is 50%. So 50% plus 34 plus, I could just estimate what this is, maybe 4%. So the, the amount below my z-score, so this direction, would be 50 plus 34 plus 4. I'm going to guess roughly 88%. Okay? It gives me a ballpark figure of what I'm expecting to, to get here. Uh, here's what a z-score table can do. Now, the z-score is on a z, it's a positive z-score, so I'm going to look at the positive table here. The z-scores are on the outside, so as you can see this. Uh, these are how you get your z-scores. <clears throat> and on the inside here, that is the percent below the z-score. And that's as a decimal value. So let's get practical. The question said, how many, what percent is below a z-score of 1.38? Uh, well, if you look, there's down the left-hand column, it's to the nearest tenth. So I'll look for 1.3. Here's 1.3. 
and then I'll look for the hundredths. If it's 1.38, it's, I'm looking for 0 0.008. And if I connect those dots, so here's 1.3, here's 0 0.08, so 1.38, it looks like I have 0 0.9162. So that's 0 0.9162, or if I times that by 100, that's 91.62% of data is below that Z score. Let's look at another example. So my estimate was relatively close. Uh, the next example says, predict how much is below a z-score of negative 0.40. Negative 0.40, again, we're just going to estimate here. Negative 0.40 would roughly be here. That's your z-score. So how much would be below that? <clears throat> well, this would be all of these here add up to 16%. And then this portion here looks like maybe it's just more than half of 34, so maybe uh, another 18%. I'm going to guess and say if I combine 16 and 18%, I'm going to guess that roughly 34% is below that z-score. Now let's show you how the z-score table is useful. Again, the z-score table always shows you what's below or to the left of that z-score. So if I look, I'm going to look in the negative part of the z-score table. So bypass the positives and go to the negative. We are looking for a z-score of negative 0.40. So in the tenths position, here's negative 0.4, way down here. And the hundredths is a zero. So negative 0.40, I would go all the way this way. And all the way, as you can see, now you might want to pause at some point in time to try this on your own. It looks like below is that, that z-score would be... <clears throat> 0.3446, or in other words, 34.46%. Okay, uh, the next problem says using the z-score table provided by Mr. Martins or on pages 592, 593, determine the percent of the data to the right or above each z-score. So, um, <clears throat> negative 2.51, would it be a z-score roughly here? So what percent would be above it? Well, this would be, so this part here is 50%. This part here, if I combine these two, would be another 47.5%. And this part here, I'm going to guess, is roughly half of 2.35. I'm going to say roughly 1.1. If I combine all of those, I'm going to have approximately, <clears throat> so 50 that's 97.5, 98.6. My estimate here is going to be 98.6%. Okay, but how we're going to use the z-score table is we're going to look for this z-score. That'll give us the percent below, and then we're going to have to subtract that from 100. <clears throat> so if I look up negative 2.51, here's the z-score table. Uh, negative 2.51, so here's negative 2.5, 0.01. This is telling me that below that z-score is 0 0.0060. So in other words, there's 0 0.0060, or in other words, 0.6% below. So above would be 100 minus 0.6%, which is 99.4% percent above, and my estimate was 98.6. Uh, the next question, maybe we'll make it our last question in this particular lesson, uh, would be what's above a z-score of 0 0.04? Uh, 0 0.04 is really close to the mean. Uh, you'll see that z-score here. Uh, z-score of 0 0.04 is roughly right here. So the percent above that z-score might be just less than 50. I'm going to guess 49%. Okay, that's going to be my guess. So let's go ahead and find a z-score of 0 0.04. Again, you might want to pause this and try it on your own. Uh, z-score of 0 0.04 would be, well, here's 0, 0.0, and here's the 0, 0.04 right here. This would be the percent below, so 51.6, because z-score tables always deal with below. Uh, so 0 0.5160, or in other words, 51.6% are below. So the percent above would be 100 minus 51.6%.
which would be roughly 48.4% would be above that Z score.